So I thought this would be an interesting topic because I've done the fake news one before, and this is related to the fake news, but at the same time, it's very topical because it's kind of what we're experiencing right now. Um, I'm sure you're aware that there's lots of scams that come up whenever we have any type of a um, situation like this, any type of a emergency. Lots of people take advantage of it. There's also a few conspiracy theories around. And people, I mean, I've, I've seen them myself. It's kind of hard to tell which ones or what might be accurate and what might not. So my main purpose of today's class was to sort of show you um, the different things that are out there and to maybe give you some tools so that you can uh, protect yourself against the scams and so that you can respond when people tell you something like the aliens have released the coronavirus and you th tell, well, I think that's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> but of course, nobody knows for sure any of this. So I mean, I may, we may come back and find out that maybe the aliens did release this, but for now, uh, we, that will probably fall under the conspiracy theory. So I'm going to share my screen with our lesson. Uh, you can all see the lesson. As a reminder, uh, the lesson is on our course website. I have revised our topics each week. I'm never really sure what I'm going to do the next week. But in order to get to our new lesson, well, of course, when you go to our site, you end up on the home page. And then from there, you can look up here at the weekly topics, and then you can find the one that we're doing now. So the most recent one will probably be at the bottom. Now, for those of you that have not been receiving my emails or aren't sure whether you've received them, I'm going to start posting them. Hopefully I'm gonna remember. So this was the first email that was sent and you would just click on the link and you would be able to see the email. So if you're not sure what the email was or if you're not sure if you got it, it should be on the website now. All right, so let's go to the scams and conspiracies. At the top of the lesson, so the lesson looks a little bit different than what we normally do. Um, and the, the reason why we've done it this way is that it makes it easy for us to go through the topic and, um, and go through each, cat each subject part and explain it. So that's why it's done this way. But I do have at the top of the lesson, I do have a link that you can click on. And when you do, you'll get that handout on, that goes along with today's lecture. Um, it doesn't have all the videos and everything that's in the course, but it does have enough that you can use that. You can forward it to others. Okay, and then um, I just wanted to make sure that at the top we had some trusted sites. Now these aren't, of course, the only trusted sites. There's many trusted sites, but a good starting point would be these. The government sites, the FDA, the World Health Organization, um, those are the ones that you want to get your information from to begin with. Um, now granted, there are other sites that have very good material out there. But if you, but again, we'll talk about when you hear something that doesn't sound quite right, maybe one of the first places to stop is one of these trusted sites. So in order to get to these sites, you would just click on the link and it will take you to that site and you will um, find pretty much anything you need to know about the disease, at least what they know. So, all right. Um, there, uh, I have set up, as part of this, uh, a special page. And this page is called Scams and Phishing Attempts. And there's just, there's just all sorts of things that are, that are popping up about um, the virus. And I included a lot of it in my lesson, but it's not going to be everything. So uh, as we come across new things, you are encouraged to add to this. And so if you're reading the newspaper or you're online and you see, a, you see information about a scam, you would just click on this little plus down here at the bottom. The first part is a title. So you can say, for example, on this one, the title was bad links. And then you could write a little bit about the link. 
Now, an advanced thing that you could do is you could even add a picture. So if you had a picture of that link somewhere. So in this case, this was a picture of a text message that was sent out. And by the way, this is not authentic. This is a scam, even though you look at it and you see, oh, Red Cross, it's gotta be, it's gotta be um, real. It's not. It's not. So it's good that we are able to uh, tell others if we come up with some of these, we'll have examples. So please, if you, if you can, use this and um, you know, tell us what you're seeing. And I'll continue to post things that I see as well. Oh, and by the way, if you decide to put something up and then you change your mind, you can delete the post. But I don't think you can delete posts you didn't put up. So does anybody have any questions on that? That's a little bit of um, feedback from you. So let's go back to the site then, and let's talk about the scams and the conspiracy theories. Okay, uh, so to begin with, scams and conspiracy theories have been around for a long time. Um, in fact, I, you know, I didn't want to get into too much, but I did find a paper that was written called Conspiracy Theories, Evolved Functions and Psychological Mechanisms, and they talk about why people uh, had conspiracy theories. And it's kind of interesting because they think that it might be a little evolutionary. So way back in the day when we were in tribes and we didn't know each other very well, a conspiracy theory worked to try to help us to adjust uh, how we deal with threats or are able to detect whether a neighboring tribe is a dangerous one. So conspiracy theories are probably one of those things that are kind of wired into our brains and, and we, we use them to help determine what is real and what isn't. Um, now, as a, we don't really have to worry too much about competing tribes anymore, but nevertheless, this whole thing about conspiracy theories, it kind of remains. Um, the New York Magazine had a list of the top theories of, of the past 50 years. I'll, I'm going to click on that briefly and we can see this. I, I really had a lot of fun with this site and I think you're going to want to come back and look at it later. Um, some of these things I remember hearing about, some of these things I don't. The mood landing was a hoax. That's, you know, been one of them. Uh, inside job, you know, if, if you're bored, go and look at some of these. And, and they're kind of interesting, but they're kind of scary too and that people do believe them. I guess we don't want to believe that something bad could happen, you know, like 9-11 or, or something else. So, um, so that's why they exist. But you can go back and look at them and that paragraph there. Um, the ultimate conspiracy, <laughs> this is just one guy, and he believed that all of the conspiracy theories are connected. So, uh, you know, and I guess I've, I've reached my monthly limit, so I can't show you that, but maybe you can see it, but um, it, just the ultimate conspiracy theory. So yes, they've been around a long time and you can go and look at some of them. Scams, scams have been around forever. Uh, 1800s were considered the golden age of scams. NPR had an interesting article about that. You can click on that if you wanna see it. Now, there are lots of scams today. And if you click on this site here from the government, uh, you can find some of the common scams and frauds. And you can see that there's a whole category now for the coronavirus ones and the price gouging ones. But there's also a bunch of other ones as well. So if you want to just sort of get up to date on some of the scams that are out there, this is a good page to go to. And again, you can access that from our um, course website. Okay, now spreading inf misinformation. So back in the day when we had information, misinformation, um, before newspapers, we would just tell someone and they would tell someone and they would tell someone, but it wouldn't go that far because we didn't really have a big reach. With newspapers, it increased quite a bit. So when somebody had news in the newspaper, it spread quickly. But at the beginning, people were very responsible, maybe not everyone, I'm sure there were some newspapers that weren't as responsible, 
but you could usually find some reputable sources out there and get your news from a reputable source. Now, unfortunately, as wonderful as it is in today's society and you know technology and everything, uh, it has meant that we are not getting our news from a reliable source anymore, um, or a que- or it could be from a questionable source. So a 2018 Pew report found that two thirds of Americans were getting their news from social media. And that would be things like Twitter and, and Facebook and Instagram and things like that. Um, now for diverse news, it's good because you're gonna get many different viewpoints, many different biases, that's good. It's also good that the news spreads quickly. Now, for some things, like if there is a, a, a national emergency going on and information is changing at every moment, being able to get up-to-date information uh, in a quick way can be very valuable. It could be life-saving. But the problem with social media is that not all of the sources are vetted. They're not all investigated. They don't all have, have um, they're not all reputable. So there's a lot of misinformation and rumors and no one is really available to 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 monitor all that they try and i know that even now with the coronavirus i know that twitter and facebook is working to kind of cut down those conspiracy theories that are sort of clogging up their their news feeds but it's difficult to stay up with things now twitter is one example of how news can travel very quickly uh, these, both of these illustrations have to do with the Zika virus back in 2015 and 2016. And what they're illustrating is in this one, the words that people were using in their Twitter feeds about the Zika virus. And in this one, the, the uh, oh, and by the way, these were all the rumors about the Zika virus. And in this one, it's sort of showing how it took off. So when you look at a diagram like this, it looks pretty crazy, but it starts with one person, one person tweeting something, and that person tweets it, and everyone that follows them on Twitter sees it. Now, if it's an interesting thing, sometimes people just just retweet it just because it was interesting. We don't always have the tools to check up on these things. So it just sounds kind of, like it might be true, and if it's not true, it's sure interesting. And these things spread like wildfire. And you can see how, they, how, how much they spread. Just during the Zika virus, these were all the tweets and retweets. And then the words that people used, uh, Monsanto, you know, that was, the, that was the company behind pesticides, and they were sure that that had to do with uh, Zika. Um, some of these other ones, same thing. So just kind of an interesting way of looking at how news spreads, but it it spreads through social networks. It spreads through social media. It spreads through people reposting things, not always um, checking their sources. So um, in this case, uh, it's important for us to know the source of where we get our information. Okay, now the conspiracy theories. Uh, Again, um, lots of different ones out there. If you go to Wikipedia, you can see a list of all the different types of conspiracy theories that have been out there. And, you know, when you really think about it, it's just amazing. Everything that happens, someone has a theory for it. And the thing about this is that these these conspiracy theories are often uh, it's often backed with photographs and videos and things like that. And the thing about photographs and videos is that they can easily be doctored. I learned this when during the Boston Marathon bombings. I mean, I was just so devastated that something like this could have happened. I was searching the internet for some way to make sense of it all. And I came across a site that said it was all a conspiracy theory, that it didn't really happen, that that it was a, it was a plan to try to test, you know, the response system, the federal response system. And the site that I looked at took pictures 
and it analyzed the pictures and it said, okay, look, you can see here in this case, this isn't real blood, blood isn't this consistency, it's something else. This person was already a, a paraplegic or, or, or a, a amputee. You can see that this person was named. And they just went through these things and it's like, you're going, oh my gosh, it was, it was completely false, but it was done in such a way to make you really wonder. And once you wonder once, it's really hard to go back and, and um, see the, the truth behind it. Uh, one really good example of this is vaccination. Uh, it started with one person. It started with the doctor saying that, you know, vaccines were the, autism was caused by vaccines, childhood vaccines. And it, it was disputed, it was tested and disputed. He lost his medical license because of this. And yet people continue to say, oh yeah, I'm not going to have a vaccine because it causes autism. And it, it's just an example of how we hear something and after we hear it, we, kind, we tend to believe it. So be wary of these things that, that don't sound real. And, and if you're bored, go back and look at some of these. And you could see that they're, they're oftentimes very compelling. And you think, oh, yeah, it might be true. So go back and look at those. That's kind of interesting. And let's go back here. Um, now, these are, this is an example of some of the conspiracy theories that have been released that have to do with the coronavirus. And so these are all ones that are conspiracy theories. And I do have to say, and I put it in bold, they're conspiracy theories, and they've already been debunked as untrue. I've seen them. You might have seen them. People will, you know, they'll send out an email to everyone, and they're saying, use hair dryers. Um, and I think they even would say, use it all over your body because that could kill the virus, okay? Or it was a bioweapon engineered by either the Chinese government or the CIA to wage war on either America or China, depending on where your conspiracy theory lies. Again, unproven, debunked. Uh, TV shows, The Simpsons, there was something in some episode of The Simpsons way back when that's, that they say... Uh, talked about this disease coming. And it didn't. It was kind of a coincidence. Uh, a special bleach product. And in fact, even today on Twitter, I don't want to, you know, we never know for sure. So it's really kind of scary to actually say something is not true. But our president is telling us to use this, um, this silver product that, that has been shown, he says, to prevent the onslaught of this disease. And the medical experts say, no, this is not the case. Is this, you, know, you should not be taking this, this treatment. But it's another example of somebody hears it, somebody passes it on, somebody believes it. And the problem with that is that it could be deadly to some people. So it's, it's, not, it's not always just something that, that you know, might be harmless. In some cases, it might be very harmful. Um, other things they talked about, oh, I got, I got a couple of emails about this one. If you can't hold your breath for 10 seconds without coughing, then you have the coronavirus. I think a lot of people were going, oh, I must have the coronavirus. I can't hold my breath for 10 seconds. Or drinking water over 15 minutes can flush it down your throat. No, those are all just, those are all just you know, not true. They're just things that people kind of made up and, um, and then, you know, they sort of feed on that and other people spread them on. I've heard this one about the mandatory two week lockdown. Uh, and again, that has not been said yet. And I know you look at that and you go, well, they still might. Well, yeah, they still might, but that it's not, it's not a true thing right now, nor is the fact that the virus came from the Chinese people eating bats. That is not true. That is another uh, theory that came out. So before people, before you believe what people are sending you, do a little research and check them out. Uh, I got this inf information from a Rolling Stones article. I know that doesn't sound like the most accurate source, but it, in this case, I, I think that it provided a good background for all this. And it just kind of told us the different rumors and hoaxes that have spread. And you can go and look at it if you would like to later on. Okay, so now FEMA, 
has jumped in and debunked some of those rumors. And again, you can view this online to see what FEMA says. And in this case, these will, uh, these will tell us all the things that have been, um, that are rumors and FEMA will tell us whether or not they're true. So for each one, if you just click on it, you can see whether or not you, um, this is true or not. So for example, do I need a photo ID to be tested at a community-based testing center? And um, it, it says that if you are a first responder, then if you have a workplace photo ID, you will get priority. So that is a relatively true rumor. Uh, maybe it just has to do with, with priority. Uh, are, they, are they deploying the military? So uh, they do talk about that and there are some, some ways that they've done it. So, so check on here and see if um, you know, those things that you've seen or heard are on there. And these are always adding on there because some of these weren't even here when I set up my lesson a few days ago. So go back to the FDA site and look at some of those claims. Um, but so far for now, uh, there is, as you know, a check that will be sent out at some point to, to people you know, below a certain income level. Um, but that check is not gonna be sent out via phone call, text, or email. So a lot of people are seeing texts and they're saying, get your check early or check here to see if your check is ready. Don't respond to any of these things. Those are scams, okay? So uh, wait until you get the official check from, from the government. D don't respond by text or email. Uh, there are no vaccines or drugs available. The FDA has set up a site which lists those different claims. And they have actually sent warnings out to these, to these different uh, uh, companies that have released products that they say can help prevent or treat um, the virus. And you can see there's the silver one right there that has not been proven yet. Um, the, you know, the, some of these are, are um, holistic ones, not been proven yet. Uh, CBD, not been proven. So you can look on here and you can see what the FDA has said about these. They've sent letters to them. They've said that you need to cease and desist saying that your products will treat coronavirus because they don't. So you can check back there frequently to see. Um, don't respond to a phone call saying that you get a free COVID test if you provide your Medicare information. That is a scam. Uh, the military is not being deployed on a federal level, but the National Guard might be. And they do say, I know that it's really scary about thinking that you're going to run out of supplies and food, but, but you know, they, there seems to be plenty of food they, in, in the warehouses. There seems to be plenty of supplies and people stocking up have, have only made the whole rumor uh, business a lot worse. So um, I think they recommend having a couple of weeks worth of food, just in case you get sick, you're able to, to have something to eat. But, um, but I don't think they need to stockpile a year worth of food. And, and that's what they've sort of suggested. Okay, some of the scams. Oh, this is a new one with the Costco. I don't know if you've heard this one or not, but Costco saying that it, since you're a good customer, uh, <clears throat> we're gonna provide you with $100 uh, as part of a stimulus package and just click here, you know, in order to receive that. Don't do that. Costco is not, is not giving you $100. Um, some emails will claim to be from the CDC. Okay, let's look at the CDC for a moment. This is a CDC site. If an email is claiming to be from the CDC, it will have, and we've talked about domain names, it will have this domain name, cdc.gov. It could have anything else behind it. That all has to do with the different folders, but it's gotta come from cdc.gov. So if you get an email and it says it's from the CDC, but you put your cursor over that email and you look at the address you're looking at, if that doesn't pop up, that's not from the CDC. So do be very wary of, of 
of uh, emails that appear to be authentic, they may not be. Okay, uh, some of the websites are claiming to track the disease. We like to see these websites that are showing us how the disease is growing in our county and in the state. But do be wary because they might be asking you for personal information. Oh, if you want to track the disease, put in your name and this is going to cost something. So put in your, your money and, you know, you just have to be very wary of that. You, should, you, don't, have, you don't have to pay to see the, the, uh, the, tra the disease tracking. Okay, you will not receive a, a note from the government asking you to verify your personal information to receive that check. That will not happen. Um, lots of robocalls out there offering assistance. Again, don't answer them, don't believe them. If, so, if you hear of a charity that might need some help, go to one of these three sites and see if that charity is mentioned there. So when you go to a site like the Charity Navigator, you can put in the charity's name. So maybe you'd put in the Red Cross. Whoop, I didn't want the back ones. And then you can find out a little bit about it. You can find out how it's rated um, and uh, what the, you know, what the um, status is, okay? So uh, do that with the, the charities that are asking for your assistance. Okay, the FDC is, has uh, offered us some tips on avoiding scams. And these include don't answer the robocalls. It's awfully tempting when you get a phone call to answer it, especially if it sounds like it's from your neighborhood or something. But once again, these are, these, uh, are probably um, trying to fish for more information. So don't, don't respond to them. If you pick it up by mistake and it says click one to get to an operator, or even click here to remove you from the call list, don't respond. Because then they know, the robocaller knows that there's a person behind that and you'll get another call again. Um, ignore any online offers for vaccinations and home test kits. There are still none available at this time. That could change, but now there's none available. Fact check everything. You know, when, when, you, when you hear about a new cure, Look it up, Google it, you know, see what, see what the experts say. Go to the CDC and find out whether this is something that should be done. I'll just say, gotta, okay. Um, let's see, don't respond to the texts and the emails about those checks from the government. We talked about that. Uh, don't click on links from sources you don't know. They're really, they know that people are sitting around now. The scammers do. They know that we're bored. They know that we're, um, you know, we want we want some connection. So that you might see links, and I'm getting a few of them from people, and oftentimes it looks like they're from somebody I know. But if I look at the email address carefully, I realize that it's not from someone I know. So I know we've talked about this in the past about how to detect bad emails, but make sure that your emails and your texts are from people you know. And then, of course, we talked about the sources when you're donating through charities. Okay, this I just thought was a little bit of comic relief here. So what you can do is you could take this and print it out here. You could play with your friends. And what you're doing is you just, you know, you're, you're just looking to see if, if you see something in your email about get a test kit. If you do, you get to put a little X there. Uh, did you get a robocall? You get to put a little X there. Did you get a note? Get free government money X there. And maybe there's another one that, that you knew is a scam. And all of a sudden you win and bingo. So <laughs> play it with your friends. I know it sounds weird, but it's something to do. And there's also, um, you can also go to the website to learn more. Okay, I include this on the top, but there are some trusted sources um, the, the CDC, the World Health, the government, the FDA, the World Health Organization. And then what do you do if you know that, the, you know, for example, we need to buy these masks or we need to get these masks. And what if you find one on Amazon and it's $50? A mask should not be $50. So that is an example of price gorging. 
Um, and that's something that, that, you know, you can actually contact the Department of Justice and say this company was price gorging and it's been going on. I've seen it on Amazon. Amazon has res responded by taking some of their merchants off if they notice that they were price gorging. So you can notify either the company you're using Amazon or you can notify the DOJ. Okay, some general tips. Okay, so uh, think about it. You, uh, you get something in your, in your uh, email or on your feed on Facebook and it just makes you angry. By the way, these are all have to do with more of a general fake news and not necessarily all coronavirus. But, you know, it just makes you angry. It, it, or, it really, or it really matches exactly what you believe and what you believe is not necessarily what everyone else believes. Those are red flags. Those are red flags. So if something gives you an emotional reaction or it's totally ridic ridiculous, or it asks that you spend money, that's a red flag. Or, and if, you, and if it is a red flag, look at the source. Where did this come from? Did it come from a reputable news agency? Did it come from a firsthand interview? Did it come from a press release? Those are all good sources of information. Bad sources are somebody said, uh, there was one going around a Johns Hopkins one with advice about the coronavirus. And you first you hear Johns Hopkins and you say, oh my gosh, I'm gonna forward this to everybody you know, this gotta be true. As it turns out, that was not a true one. They had some fake things in it. And people didn't catch it because they all just forwarded it because it's from Johns Hopkins and we trust Johns Hopkins. So, so look at the source of where it came from. And if it came from an email from someone else and you can't actually see the actual site where it came from, assume that maybe it's not so true. Okay, check out the link. So oftentimes there will be a link associated with it. Now I know I did say you don't want to click on strange links. So you, uh, you do want to be uh, a little bit wary of what you click on. Um, also look at the date. On Facebook, sometimes people post things and it'll say rest in peace so-and-so. And then as it turns out, that whole article about them dying is like four years old. I don't know why people do that, but you know, looking at the timestamp uh, or the date of the posting, that might help you to determine whether or not that is um, a good source or not. Um, sometimes a bad source may have uh, a quote that's taken out of text. Uh, it may be an, one that, again, makes you angry or a photo that May, that looks like it's connected, but it may not even be related to what we're lear to what you're reading about. So if something is really, you're really trying to investigate to see whether or not it's true, you can always look at things and try to back pedal and try to see where that came from. Can you find the original source? And that's done through Google and, and different things like that. Okay, um, finding the context where it appears. So the story might be partly right, like the Johns Hopkins. It was partly right, but there were some things thrown in that were not right. So if you can get to the source, you can find out what is true and what isn't. In some cases, the source can be satire. It, it, uh, it's supposed to be funny, but a lot of people just, they'll, they'll send out a link from, from a satire news organization and people will retweet it or repost it without actually trying to consider, is this really true? Which is, it's not, it was written, you know, when it wasn't, it wasn't true. Um, there's something called the media bias chart. And I've used this in my fake news class and I really think it's a fascinating tool. If you go to the online version you can actually look at it in pieces and you can see what news sources are, are more trusted than others. So at the very top, you've got AP, you've got Reuters, you have NPR, you have Wall Street Journal. These are all falling in the, in the neutral, neutral, balanced bias, pretty much reliable, 
maybe not 100% reliable, pretty much reliable. And then below that, you've got the BBC and the Business Insider. Um, and so you have different ones like that. Kind of on the border now, you can see ones like HuffPost or Forbes or Atlantic. Again, they still fall in the safety zone, but they might skew a little bit to the left or the right. Um, and then you kind of drop down a little bit. So CNN, MSNBC, pretty liberal right there. Vanity Fair, I think that's underneath there, pretty liberal. Um, and pretty conservative, New York Post or Newsmax. Again, these are, if they fall somewhere in the middle here, you can still believe them, but they might be a little bit skewed or, or might lack um, a, little bit of, um, a little bit of truth to them. So Fox News, um, those are some of them. Now, as we move down here, we're getting into some of the, the less reliable ones. So anything down here at this part is one that you should be a little concerned about. And so um, uh, down here, you can see that you've got, you've got a, a tool. So let's see, this would be the, um, the PJ Media, that's called PJ Media, right, uh, very right themed, Red State, Infowars. Infowars has been, has been, I don't want to say banned, but there's been, um, there's been a lot of backlash to Infowars. That is one of the, the uh, news organizations that really has, um, you know, included some things that were not true. In fact, that's why I first saw the Boston bombing information. So National Enquirer, not necessarily biased, but just not very reliable. World Truth TV, not very reliable. Palmer Report. So all these are a little bit um, less reliable. If you click on a box, you can see probably a little bit better what's in there. So you get a better view of, of where these things fall. But this is a good starting point. If somebody sends you something and they, they say it's from CNN, it's not that it's not reliable, it's reliable, but it might skew a little bit to the left. It might be a little bit more liberal than one that you'd find on, on the right. So the Fox News versus CNN that might be similar to the reliability, but one may skew one direction and the other might skew the different direction. So you can see a link to this. You have a, a copy here that is just a, a regular one. But if you click on, on this link, you could see the interactive version, and that will tell you a little bit more uh, specifically what news stations are reliable and which are not. Okay, and then you want to also look at the evidence. So you want to look at how the story is working, um, which parts are accurate, which parts are not necessarily accurate. Um, does this article change your opinion and behavior? If it does, are there some facts that are being left out or distorted? We tend to be more interested in things that follow our own bias. And so if, if we are online and we have a certain feeling about you know, politics or, or something, we tend to use things that are uh, related to that bias. So if you wanna be a truly informed uh, consumer, we need to look at what's in there and what is not in there. And if you find, if you still feel like it's, it's a reasonable story, then you can share the story. But if there remains doubt in your mind, then, then use your good judgment and maybe don't, even if you think that it makes sense, don't forward it to everyone else because you might be forwarding something that is not true. So um, down a little bit lower here, we have how to spot fake news. And these are, this is kind of what we talked about, um, but it's a nice chart that you can look at. And just, you know, when you, when you get these fake news, first look at the source. You can look at that interactive map we just talked about or see if it's something that actually exists. Um, the headlines, sometimes the headlines will be so outrageous and then the story has nothing to do with it and we want to afford it because we like the headlines. So read beyond the headlines. 
check the author. You can always Google the author, make sure that they are a media consultant like they say they are. Are there links in there? Look at the links. Oftentimes the fake news will include links, but the links will have nothing to do with what, the, what they're trying to discuss. So do a little bit of research and check out those links. Mm -hmm. Look at the date. As we said, sometimes people repost old information and make it seem like it's new. So look at the date. Um, if it's really outlandish, it could be satire. And it, sometimes it's hard if we see it out of context to realize it's, it's satire. So, you know, look at the source and see if, see if, you, uh, if, if it does have truth or if it is. Biases, like I said, we all have biases and we all tend to like information that supports our bias. So think about what your own biases are and then be wary of, of forwarding or, or sending, up, um, sending out too many reposts of something that is strictly within your bias. Because not only is it perhaps a little bit irresponsible because you may not be sh showing both sides, but it also... Um, if, if, you, if you constantly are looking at things from a certain viewpoint, when you, when you go and visit Google, when you go and use these social networks, you're going to find that your feeds and your information is more related on what you believe in. And it's just going to make you more biased. So it's probably a good idea to try to look at both sides of things. Even if you truly believe in only one side, you should maybe look at the other side and see what their argument is. And then a fact checking site. And I realized that this was all done, I didn't really include too much information on that. One of, one of the old standbys, which used to be very, very reliable, but now I think that it has a little bit of a commercialism attached to it, but I'll show it to you anyway. Snopes. Are you familiar with Snopes? Okay, so Snopes is a, um, a site where you can go and you might, someone might send you some information and you're going, is this true or is this not true? You could search Snopes for it. So you can actually, someone sends you an email saying, uh, did a tiger at New York's Bronx Zoo test positive for coronavirus? And so you could put that in and then you would get to their site and it would tell us that, well, I think it's gonna tell us that it did. So, so in this case, it was true. Now, some of the things, um, let's see, holding, holding your breath to see if you have coronavirus. Let's see if that tells us anything. Okay, oh, it didn't yield any results. Okay, well, at any rate, if you hear something, and you want to check, this is one of the interesting ones, but it does, um, you know, it does have a little bit of advertising involved now. But um, yeah, but these are all true things down here. And then some more virus or some more rumors here. Um, uh, here's, uh, um, yeah, here's some of the popular ones, some of the more, you know, Nostradamus, you know, that one. So, uh, you know, Snopes is always an interesting source and, and uh, can help you determine whether something is true or not. It's not, of course, the only one. Okay, and then this is like something you could do on your own. So you might be reading about the coronavirus and you may hear a story about it. And here's a worksheet that kind of goes over some of the different things we talked about. And you could go through and say, oh, is that true or is that not true? So if you want to use this, you can, but it's just an example of a tool you can use if you're really serious about getting down to the bottom of, of the truth. And that's it for the lesson itself. Uh, I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm going to stop sharing for now, but we can go back if we want. And why don't you, um, if you have questions, you can unmute yourself by clicking on your microphone and go ahead and say something. When you're done, you might mute yourself back because we do have a lot of background noise. Mary, I have a question. Okay. Donald Trump, every day on the news briefing, mentioned a medicine called hydrochloroquine. Let's research that. 
Yes. Okay, I saw that on the Twitter. Uh, let's let's do it. so. Hydro. Hydro with how do you, with hydrochloroquine? There we go. Right. Okay, so there it is. And um, okay, I'm gonna. Well, Twitter is kind of a Twitter is kind of an interesting thing, but let's go and look at. So here you've here you've heard something, and you're on now Twitter, which can be reliable and can be unreliable depending on who you're following. I don't know who the heck Stone Cold is here. So I don't really, um, it, and obviously he's anti-Trump. So there's one thing about it. Um, he, Bill Mitchell, uh, Bill Mitchell is making it seem as though this is uh, effective. Um, let's go to, uh, let's see, let's go to uh, uh, Google. And see, and see if we can get to the bottom of this. So we're gonna to go to Google. And so when you go to Google, the first thing you wanna do is look at where things are being sent from. So uh, first of all, we've got Wikipedia. Mm, not really 100% uh, trustworthy because it's, you know, it's written by people. So it's a good background on what that medicine is it's used for malaria, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. By the way, there are lots of side effects to this drug as well. Okay, here is fact checking. Okay, so let's look at fact, fact checking. And now I'm on a site that I may not be familiar with. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to see whether or not this site, which I've never heard of, is a respectable site. So you want to look for something that tells you about this site in order to see whether it's you know a biased or reliable site. So I come down to the very bottom of the screen and then I go to about. And then there it's going to tell us, um, let's see, take you inside, explore controversies, award-winning, okay. Um, who's behind it? Boston Globe Media. Boston Globe Media, okay? So now I wonder if the Boston Globe, uh, let's see, is, is I wanna go back to that diagram I have and see what, if Boston Globe is there. So you can see that, that you can go down a rabbit hole with these things, but um, let's go, let's go, let's go, whoop. Okay, so Boston Globe, where does that fall? Okay, so I think with this, I'm going to go back to that chart, to that interactive chart, and I'm going to go and look for, um, let's see, Bo Boston Globe. Let's see, Boston Globe, and it's not on there. Okay, so I'm not sure about that, um, about STAT. So let's go back and see if we can find another source that talks about it, because I wasn't sure about that. This is the MD, WebMD one, and that will just tell you the side effects. That's not telling us whether or not that's good for the disease. Uh, neither does Healthline. Again, it's just telling you about it, not saying whether it's for the disease. Um, the Lancet is a medical journal, so I would be more inclined to see what they say. So as we look on that journal, um, they are saying that uh, the drug is rarely used for arthritis. Um, it has been attached as a possible antiviral agent and shown apparent efficacy in treating COVID in humans. Okay, it's prompted many, including the president, to tout it as a game changer in the fight against COVID. Um, the, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has designated for off-label compassionate use. So that means if somebody is, is really sick with coronavirus, they can try that. And WHO has uh, started a trial as well. But uh, the excitement is premature. Um, they say whether it works uh, for all, it's not proven for any virus and in randomized controlled trials against a number of viruses, it didn't work at all. 
So they're suggesting, and this is from UCSD, they're suggesting that maybe it's going to be the case with coronavirus. So in other words, what Trump is doing is he's pushing uh, something that uh, has not been proven to be effective for coronavirus. Um, and just because he's the president, um, you know, doesn't, in fact, I, I think that, that his advisors are not as quick to agree with him on that. So you can see that, that even things like that, there's no clear evidence about this. Um, if we were to, uh, if we were to go, um, to the CDC site and ask about, I think that might be the next one we do, cdc.gov and ask about the hydro, uh, hydrochlorine. Okay, so let's see. And hydro, hydro hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxy X. Hydroxy. Oh, there it is. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see what they say from the CDC. Okay, um, so, okay. There are no approved drugs yet. Um, on this one, their oral prescription used for malaria, used for malaria. They have, they were useful in SARS. Um, there might have been some benefits in China. Um, it's currently recommended for treatment of hospitalized in several countries. So he is correct there that it's being used in other countries. Um, they have safety pro profiles, but they are concerned about cardiotoxicity, which could hurt your heart um, with people that have used it a long time, but seems to be well tolerated in, in coronavirus. Um, it's currently under investigation and trials and there's no uh, agreement on yet. So like anything else in the new, the, so like anything else in, in the, the news, it's new, but they are not sure whether or not it, it is, um, it is uh, uh, possible. Okay, uh, NIH, okay, so I guess Dave, so we did check the CDC, so that gave us, that gave us at least from them, uh, a picture that it's not like it's, it, it, it wouldn't work, but there's still no proof yet. Um, and they do have some anecdotal treatments here. So I think one of the problems, isn't it, that um, doctors have been, uh, have been prescribing this to people so that they can have it in case they got sick. I remember that as being one of the problems with this. Okay, Deli, that was a good question. Thank anybody, you. Who else, anybody else have something they wanna talk about? By the way, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>